I'd like to uh, introduce Pat Meisenholder, and Pat is Product Technical Manager with Michelin Tire. So I'll turn it over to you, Pat. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I don't know if I should stand up here or not because I know what everybody's asking right now, where are your tires, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> okay, I know that that's out there. Um, just to update you on that before I start the presentation, the 365-70-22-5 tires that we make for Prevo, we, um, we launched it, we were successful with it, and the good news or bad news is that the motor coach industry loves that tire. So the demand on that tire has also gone up so like uh, Coach USA, Greyhound, they're using that tire as well. That's the good news, bad news. Good news is we're, we're making them more than twice a year. That was our, our traditional, we would make them twice a year. And then the bad news is there's more demand. Um, we are making those tires right now. They are currently in production. We do have them at some of the Prevo service centers. Um, and as, as horrible as it sounds to say, sometimes the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And so if you as a consumer, you call up consumer care and you say to Michelin, I can't find your tires, and our co consumer relations starts listening to you, we want to make sure that you know that they hear your voice. And so you know, a lot of times you think, oh, they don't care if I call. Trust me, we care. But the tires are in production right now. They are shipping out to dealers right now. So I just wanted to put that out there. And so I could go to the other fun stuff like heat and tires and dirt. Is that okay? All right. So basically I just wanted to go over a little bit about tire construction and the importance of having the proper air pressure. I want to talk a little bit about how a tire works, how it, it deflects and it compresses, and um, about in, internal heat. Uh, sidewall fatigue, and then lastly uh, about our RV service tire manual. So what's in a, what's in a tire? When you look at a tire, you, you, all we really see is the black rubber, right? Well, that's just a small component of what's in a tire. There's actually over 200 different components that are within a tire that you can't see. But about 15% of that is steel, and that's what I wanted to talk about today. So when we look at the tire and we look at all of those colored pieces, that's, that's where the steel belts are. That's the steel casing. And that's where you've got body plies that go on top of that tire as well. Um, I actually have a tire here, a cutaway. It does bite if you want to look at it and, and come see it after. Be careful because it, it's real. But you'll, you, you can see you know, where the steel is and you can see how thick or maybe how thin the sidewall actually is. So now this is where, you know, I'm Pat Meisen Holder, but now I need a holder. So here's Tommy Holder. <laughs> um, here's just what I want to talk about. Let's just say that this is a cable. This is one of the steel cables, okay? Starts at the bead, it goes all the way down, comes all the way back up. There's about 1,100 of these body plies, radial steel cables that are in each tire, okay? So each, t each time you, you drive, you're, t you're your tire is expected to go, and each cable is expected to go from flat, and then you're going to drive over it, and then up here it's going to actually get bigger, and it's going to be under tension, and then it's going to come back here, and then it's going to get compressed again. So 500 times a mile, this is going to go up, it's going to get hit, it's going to get under tension, and then it's going to go back under load. And you, you expect 1,100 of these cables to do this 500 times a mile. So that's a lot of, of, of work and flexing that you expect this tire to do. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. <laughs> so it, when, when you just think about how much that tire is flexing, when it's under load and then it gets tense, just, just remember that when you think about the importance of the air pressure. Because when the tire is going around, we want to ensure that when it compresses, it compresses like Goldilocks, not too much, not too little, just right. We want it to be, like you'll say, they'll say it's a radial bulge. We want that little bit of bulge down here at the bottom of the tire. What we don't want is when you put 
not enough air pressure or you overload it, then you're changing where that bulge is. And instead of it bulging here where it's supposed to be, it's bulging down here. It's compressing further down. So I, I kind of gave away the secret here, but this is kind of like the, the simple math. I like doing this just to visualize. If you've got a tire that goes around 500 times in a mile, and you go 10,000 miles, then that tire has actually gone around 5 million times that you have expected it. Now, when you think about that, when, you, when in the tire industry, we're really worried about tire to wheel mismount. And we don't want the tire to wheel to be mismounted so that the bead is not properly seated against the wheel. When that happens, you have a shorter sidewall, you're going to wear the tire out different in the, sh the part that's shorter than in the part that's, that's um, fully engaged. And then you'll get a tire to wheel, they call it mini maxi wear. And then you start seeing a wear pattern and you might have 11.30 seconds on one side and 13.30 seconds on another, on another side and you're thinking, why did this happen? That's where the tire to wheel mismount comes in. So that's where a number like 10,000 miles, I only went 10,000 miles. Well, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, but that tire went around 5 million times in the wrong spot. How do you prepare that um, Having a good tire, tire provider and making sure that your tire to wheel provider is following the right methods is the important thing to do. And the, uh, the most important thing a tire guy can do is properly lube both the wheel and the tire when he's installing them. So let's talk about the heat, the heat that's building up inside your tires. Do most of you have some type of a tire pressure monitoring system? Okay, I have an expert here that can help with that question too, so don't go too far, Tommy. When we talk about heat, we know that internal heat is going to build up in a tire. That's why we always say check your tires when they're cold. So if you know what your target air pressure is and you check it and it says 100 and it's, you're here in West Palm and it's 100 PSI, you're good. Now you drive up to Georgia and you check your air pressure again or you look on your dash and now all of a sudden the number isn't 100 PSI anymore. I think on your system it, it does a variability check. Yes, we do uh, pressure, temperature, deviation or compensation. So this is why when you turn the ignition on and your screen is coming up, where you're always on the deviation screen. Deviation is plus or minus uh, PSI, basically according to your set point. Okay, this is where you want to keep it around, I like it around plus one, zero plus one for us to be fine. Okay, because like, like uh, Pat said, if, if, if you take your pressure with a gauge here, okay, where it's uh, 100 degrees outside, and your, pre your tire pressure is at 120, if you go north, you look with the gauge, you may be down at 100, but the dash still says zero PSI or plus one PSI because it's pressure temperature compensation. So, okay? So you should always uh, look at your pressure uh, when you have a, a tire monitoring system. You should always look at your deviation and then adjust your pressure accordingly to be around the plus one, zero plus one plus two PSI. Thank you, Tommy. Now, if you had the old-fashioned tire gauge like I do, and I, I drive up to Georgia, and I check my pressure, then I would find that my pressure in my tires over time has probably went from, if it started at 100, it was probably at 115 or 120. And as Tommy said, that's okay. We want that to happen. We know that the tire is going to build up pressure. What they, they call that temperature, um, as a rule of thumb, is ambient plus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. And that is considered the, the optimum ambient or, or operating pressure. They also call that thermal equilibrium, which is a, just a fancy way of saying that the tire can dissipate the heat at the same amount of time that it's generating the heat. Where we get into trouble is when it goes into too much heat. So let's just say you're braking a lot. Um, or that, that would really, I would think, would be the, the thing that would cause in a motorhome industry like hot, a lot of braking going down grade. If you're getting a lot of heat within the bead area there, the maximum temperature that we want our tires to be exposed to is 194 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you get hotter than that, which you could do if you did a lot of severe braking, then anything above 230 degrees will impact the tire, the rubber, and the 
the steel in the tire because they don't naturally adhere. So rubber does not adhere to steel and the oil. That's not a natural. We need that heat for a little bit of dissipation, but we don't want it to get too hot. Again, Goldilocks rule. So if we would peel back the onion or peel back the tire and try to see what it would look like where all those steel cables, where all these body plies were, were bent in the wrong way, what you would see is the fatigue area like I, I show on the left. That's an x-ray of a tire. You can see where all of those cables are starting to fray. And if we would peel back the actual rubber, that's what it would look like on the sidewall. So I went quicker too. Um, so we do, have, we do have additional information. If you go to michelinrvtires.com, that's our website, we do have a new service manual. I brought about 30 with me. What I wanted to make sure that I let you know is that um, in, in good planning, we updated this manual January 1st, or June 1st, and July 1st, we switched our warranty. So we switched our warranty to be, to increase our tire consumer warranty from five years to seven years. So what that means for you is seven years from date of installation, not the born on date, not the DOT date, I know everybody knows how to find those, but the date of installation. If you know when you uh, mounted the tire, that's when the, that's when the clock starts, seven years from then. Now, if you have an OEM brand new vehicle that you bought and it's beautiful and you go down and you look at the tires and you say, those tires are two years old, I don't want them anymore. Those tires that are two years old, your registration date for your OE vehicle is your start date for your warranty. So I just think that's important for you to know so that a lot of times people, they, you're worried about it and I understand that, but as long as tires have been stored in a properly uh, regulated environment, there is no worry with them being two years old when you put them on. And then lastly, please register your tires at michelinman.com. Sounds really silly to do, but please do that so that we know where you are and we've got proof this is when you put the tires on and if we would have any type of a, an issue, we could find you easily. Yes, sir. The question was seven years starts when? The day that it's mounted on your vehicle. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, I purchased tires when they were scarce. I have them in my shop and they've been there almost two years now. How do I, how do I confirm for you for the warranty if I put those on as, as a consumer that I didn't put them on until two years later? Did I'll everybody hear the question? If, if you've got, you've got tires stored. Yes but they've not been mounted. Who, who will be mounting your tires for you? I would have, wherever I broke down at, have them installed. Okay, <laughs> all right. That, well, when you do, just make sure that you've got that, uh, the receipt showing this is when it was put on, and it was put on new, and you could even have the service provider write on the DOT of the tire then, and then again, register your tires once you start using them in service. Because that would be the secondary proof when you call consumer care and say, look, when I started using them on June 3rd, I registered them. But there, there has to be some time when I can't let them sit in my shop for 50 years. Correct, correct. The maximum we ever want a tire to be is 10 years old. That's the maximum age. From after five years of driving on a tire, we recommend that you have an annual inspection by somebody that understands tires, whether it's at a Prevo service center or a tire dealer have them inspect them or at a, at a rally, I could go out and look at your tires just to see from year five to year 10, we recommend to have an annual inspection. And then after 10 years, no matter how much tread is on them, just budget for new ones. You can do that here. I can do that here, I brought my tools. <laughs> I got nothing else to do, right? <laughs> yes, sir. So the question was, the, the, warranty, the warranty starts for the manufacturer's warranty ends at year seven of date of installation. So as long as, I guess, really, if your tires are four years old sitting out in your shop, then that last year there would not be any warranty on them. So, I mean, there's like a three-year grace period. The question is, is it a requirement for inspection? 
recommend starting in five years? Do you think you have to it, go to that? It's a recommendation okay. for you to do that, but not a requirement. Okay. <coughs> yes, sir. Proper storage for a two year period up or flat? Um, flat. <coughs> Um, and then the other thing in the service manual we have, it's, a, it's about 15 pages and it's geared just for uh, the motorhome industry. So all, all the fun stuff that you may or may not want to know, it's in there. Yes, sir? So you're saying if you can sell for three years or more, and seven years that you can have, you can have <coughs> two, ten years old. The question was, if the tires are three years old when you put them on, can you still drive on them for 10 years? And the answer is yes. It's seven years of use, but not to exceed 10 years of casing life. <coughs> Ma'am, back there. I have a question about tire covers. If you're moving every couple days or every week, is it still critical to use tire covers when we're parked, or does that not significantly extend the life of the tire? It, um, if I was selling tire covers, I would tell you yes, but I'm not, <laughs> I'm selling tires. <laughs> um, so that, I mean, that's where it gets to be a fine line. If you're parked somewhere for a long time and it's a high ozone area, area then they help, but moving your tires is the best thing you can do. Um, a lot of motorhomes, you know, if you're not moving them every month, even if you can just take a day trip and go 45 minutes, we want it like one hour, 45 minutes of heat generated in those tires about once a month. Just so that you can flex the tires, because like I said earlier, these tires aren't, they don't naturally adhere together. And if they just sit, this, one of the hardest things to do is tell, tell people, go move your, your vehicle, just heat it up from the inside out. And that's really what we'd want you to do. Yes, sir? Tire dressing or maintenance and the cleaning of, of a tire? Tire dressing or maintenance of a, um, again, if I was selling those tires, <laughs> I, 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 I'm selling those products, I, I, I don't sell them. I know people like things to look pretty and shiny, but if they have any type of a petroleum base in, a, in them, then you're, the, the, quick, the quick trick is whatever product it is that you're using, if you, Put it on and uh, 20 minutes later go by and just wipe your finger. If your finger is black, then if, if the stuff went on creamy color white and now your finger is black, that's carbon black that is wicking out of your tire. So, you know, just regular car wash soap works really well. <coughs> Not Dawn, car wash soap. Dawn will eat away the, um, the, the oil. I'm wondering, you say you should use once monthly to, to generate heat in your tire. Does concrete have a detrimental effect on the rubber, on the tire setting directly on concrete? Should it be put yes. up on wood? Or? That's, that's a good question. The question was about concrete. <laughs> Sitting on concrete, for some reason it does wick out that, the, the oils and, and there's, it, there's evidence of that when after you drive, if you sit it for a while and then you come and you look and you go, oh great. Look at, look at the mess that Aunt Martha left on my driveway when she parked her RV here for a month. I mean, that's, that's, you can see actually the evidence of it wicking out. Um, just really rubber, rubber mats, just something in between, just a little bit of inter interface. It doesn't have to be wood. You know, just old car mats would work fine. What if the concrete's painted? Um, if the concrete's painted, that's a good question. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I, I, I mean, I could make up a say, do it anyway, but I'm not sure. I can check. I'm not selling concrete paint. Yes, sir. <laughs> when I when I saw my bus for a while, I usually put it up on the jack stand so that the, there's no weight on the tires. Is that just the recommended practice that's in the city for a couple months? The question was if you're going to let your motor coach sit for a couple months, is it a good idea to put it on jack stands? And that is a good practice. That's a, a very good practice. Not everyone has that luxury, but yes, if you can do that, that's, that's a good idea. Production. If 
increase the population of the 365 tigers. The second part of the question is, where do the tigers go? Who has first priority? Where do we find them? When we're broke down on the side of the road. Okay. I, did everybody hear the question? Because this is painful, because I, I understand. The question is, if you are in a blowout situation and you're 365, you know, you need a new one, what should you do? Where should you go? That was point one. And then the second point was, when we do make tires, are we making more than, than we were? And that answer is yes, we are. Um, and then the third question is priority. How do we prioritize our tires? And um, Tommy and Steve, you might want to leave the room. <laughs> No, I, I'm kidding. Um, now, truthfully, the um, Prevo has, is our number one priority for this tire because we designed it with them back in 2001. This is a tire that was a joint venture and then the industry is following behind us. It's a Me Too tire. That's, that's the, the good news or bad news depending on how you look at it. So when we need tires, if you can get to a Prevo service center, they should be able to get them before a Michelin tire dealer can. And that causes a little bit of disparity within our truck tire market because they are thinking, wait, we sell hundreds of thousands of the tires, we should get them first. But we actually ship them to the Prevo service centers before we ship them to Snyder Tire or Callahan Tire or, or somebody that's a local. Um, we do have a, an on-call service, Michelin 911 on-call service that you could call and and ask them, I'm broke down, where can I find this tire? And if you call them and find out what, you know, they, they should be able to see our inventory to know at least who it is, or at least they're making the phone calls and not you. And, and again, lastly, I know I started off with please call, you know, it's like a petition, you know, call Michelin and, and say, where are the tires? We need these tires because just for, you know, me texting to, the production guy saying, hey, how you doing? Can I buy you a beer and can you get me some more tires? It's not gonna work. You're our customers, you're our voice. Not knowing that I don't have 365 on this particular coat. What's the advantage of the tire? I don't have any problems with the tire. What's the advantage of the tire of the 365? I mean, if you talk amongst each other, what you'll find out is it's got a better load carrying capacity and you can run it, you don't have to run it at 130 PSI. You can run it depending on, Tommy, we are gonna show the, the calculator, depending on what your axle weight, you, you can run it as low as 100 on the front axle, depending on how much you're carrying. What is that an advantage? Well, the ride comfort. You get a lot better ride comfort and the steering and maneuverability, it, it just, it, it rides better. Is it safe? It, it is, yes, well, yes, all, all tires are safe. But the, the question is, is it safer? The one thing that, the, one of the reasons we have a, we were talking about the super wide single, and we were talking about, you know, that big flat tire, the big, it's a 455, 55, 22, five is what it's called. It's an X1. It's got Infinicoil in it. And what that is, is a quarter of a mile of wire that's wrapped around this way to keep the contact patch flat on the road. And we do that so that it's get, it has a better ride. We have that same technology in this tire, this, the, the 36570 XEA. We have that technology in the tire. So not that we want a tire to go, but if a tire does come apart and the tread comes <coughs> off, this big slinky worth of Infinicoil, that stays flat on the ground and you don't lose your casing. So. If you would have, you know, where the tread would all of a sudden detach, you're still gonna, as long as you stop safely, you're still going to have air in that tire. And that, that was one of the things when we sold the X1 into the, the market that we wanted to make sure. So when we came to Prevo and said, you know, well, we can do this, that's how we can do it, is because we have that Infinicoil so technology in flat, it. Then? No, it's not considered a run flat. It's just an extra layer Within here, it's just an extra layer where most steel belts, here Tommy, yep. where most steel belts are like this, <coughs> the Infinicoil goes around like this. It's the same technology we, have in the, we had in the space shuttle tire. So it's on top of all of that, and by doing that, it's just an extra layer of security. So if you were driving a coach, you'd have a 365? Yes. Um, 
<laughs> that's, if I could find them, yes. <laughs> here, let, let me go back here. Sorry. flexibility in the hierarchy? Do they have the ability to come up with these tires somehow? The FMCA program is a program I'm talking about where you can call in and um, oh, they... So that's that hierarchy. Is that, do they get hierarchy over here? Right no. Over? No. no. So I mean, that's... Right. that's, that's yeah. right. I thought about it for a little bit. Yeah, and on the FMCA thing? They're not on. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it, it's, that's a roadside assistance program is what the FMCA program is. Roadside assistance, so you can call in and you can say, um, I'm on, on the side of the road, I need help. There is that on-call advantage to it. And, and that's where our tired network that's out there right now, they should be able to call and find out where are these tires? Where are the 365s in the nation? Instead of you sitting there calling everybody, they should be calling everybody. Sir? You said that you increased your warranty from five to seven years. Is that still a prorated warranty? Or what is that warranty? That's a good question. Thank you for bringing that up because that was one of those, do we put a line in the sand and say all tire purchases after January 1st? No, we actually grandfathered. So your tires that are on your Motorhomes right now, they do have a seven-year warranty, not a five-year as they had when we sold them to you. So you do have a seven-year. No, well, the question, my question was, is it a replacement warranty or is it a prorated warranty or how do you, how, what is the warranty? Are you going to give me a new tire in seven years or? It's prorated based on tread depth. So, but it is a prorated, prorated warranty based okay. on tread. That was, yeah. What's a, if we have a, a 365 blowout on the highway, what's the first thing you want us to do? Okay, if you have a 365 blowout, if you have any tire blowout on the highway, the, the thing that's the hardest thing to think about is what should I do? If you've ever seen, we have a movie called The Critical Factor. It, the first thing you do after you scream is to actually accelerate a little. Or if, if you have cruise control on, just let it continue. Disengage your cruise control, but whatever you do, don't hit the brake. Once you hit the brake, you're, you're giving that tire the opportunity to pull you in the direction of wh whichever side of the rig. That's the biggest mistake is to, and that's for your own car too. Just make sure you, you know, step on it, wet your pants, back off, get to the side of the road. <laughs> hey, whoo, I made it. <laughs> Sir. Tommy, thank you for setting this up. The question was, nobody ever tells me what tire pressure I exactly need. So, I'm just repeating your question. So, Tommy has wanted to show off his tool to show you how this can be. Different pressure in different coaches. What, what is the difference wait, between each coach? Wait, wait, exactly. So the, the converter, new coaches, the, I mean, they're really nice. They, they weight all the axle and they set the pressure when it comes out of, uh, of the conversion. But if you're buying a used a use coach, right, you, you don't always know what the weight of each axle is, depending on what stuff you're going to carry in your vehicle. So if you're buying a used coach, the first thing you should do is, after you all set for all the stuff you're gonna carry in your coach, you should go to a scale and then weigh each axle, okay? Individually, so you know what each axle will weigh. And then if you go to the, and also in Michelin, in their brochure, they also have the graph with the weight and then the pressure and then the type of tire you should, you should uh, use. So what we've done, we use that information and then build uh, that here on our website. So, let me just go 
rule down here. Okay? So you got your three axle, front, drive, and tag. Depending on what type of tire you have, or tire size, you got 315 or 365. Okay? And that'll, that'll answer also your question about the 315 and 365. So depending on what your front axle weight, because that's mostly the ax the most critical axle because you just have that one, uh, those two tires, right? So depending on the weight, oops, sorry. So you just click on it and then, let's say if your front axle weight uh, 17,650 uh, pounds, okay? So you're gonna click on this here. And then if you have a 315, you're gonna run that at under 25 PSI, okay? So, if your coach was built with a 315 and then you want to switch it over to 365, you can do that. And look at the difference in pressure. So if you go to 365, then you can lower down to 80, 80 PSI. So it, it, it's a different weight. Or different axle. Oh, different weight, yeah. <coughs> uh, for the, uh, for the, uh, we'll go back yeah. to uh, zero. So no, no, it's lower. Which one did I 17. 17. Yeah. All right. So and then under the panel. Okay. Because 365 will give you that safety factor for weight uh, capacity. Yes, sir. If we get stuck on the road, I'm running to buy. The question was, does any of our competition make the 365? Do you want the good news or the bad news? The good news, yes. They don't sell them to you. <laughs> now, uh, Bridgestone has come out with a R269, and they are using it in dedicated fleets that they monitor their own tires in. Um, so where they're competing on a fleet solution basis, they do make the tire, but they won't sell it out into the open industry. You can see it. I mean, you can go to a trade show and see it, but I've only ever seen one. I've never seen it actually on a bus. And, uh, yes, sir. What's the typical incarceration time for theft of tires? <laughs> <laughs> typical incarceration no, time. That's really the best way to go. <laughs> now, I mean, they, we are shipping right now, and um, the local tire dealer that supports uh, Liberty Coach, I just asked him, I said, do you have any? He said, don't tell them, but I have four because Liberty Coach is coming to get them. Um, so, they are shipping. We are getting them out. It's just taking time. So I have to assume that your visibility into your ship inventory stops at your distributors. You don't actually have visibility below that. Because when tires are not available, you can buy tires that are two years old. So they were clearly available. So I'm just trying to understand how people can actually see you and you need to make that call. For <coughs> You're right. We just see what we sold in, we don't see their actual inventory within the tire industry. So it's still up to us to start calling around to try to get the tire and the test because there's no one place where the tires are designed. Um, I, I, I guess the advice I would give to you is that you, I mean, you, you can look at your tires and see what's coming you know, and if you're always working with one or two tire dealers that you know and you trust, or the, or the Prevo Service Center, you know what they have. You know, if I, if I had to call right now and say, hey, do you have any 365s available? I would start at the Prevo Centers before I would start at the tire centers. I'm with everybody else. I don't know how to schedule my tires. Right. I'm worried about, I'm in some town, I'm not paying it. I'm not to support I, I, okay. I, so you're more in the, er, the emergency roadside. Um, it, it, well, I mean, it, a, a couple of options. If you're stuck on the side of the road, as you're saying, um, if you reach out to some of the motor coach operators, like, you know what I mean? But, but that's a good question. Yeah. So. So if you're stuck on the side of the road and you're trying to figure it out, call Tommy and find out where he has sold his Prevo coaches. I mean, we were at, you know, if you're, you're at a place where everybody is, they might have some and they might have spares in a rack that we wouldn't consider from a tire perspective. 
keep, keep in mind, another option you have also, especially if you have a blow up on the front, your two tag tires are also 365. Okay, I know it's a little bit of work, but a 315, it's pretty easy to find. Then you can take your 365 from the tag, move it to the front where you have your flat tire, and find a 315 to put on the tag, and finish your trip that way. Except for many of us that have switched the 365 to only did it up front. Just in the front, yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, so keep, keep that option in mind also. So, if you're running 365s, or 315s in the back, or, I'm sorry, 365s in the back, yeah. bring one forward. That's right. And then put a 315. And put a 315. And still have a 365 on the other side. Yeah, that's a tag axle. So, okay. so many. Okay. It's not a little bit on the same wheel, the same wheel. So no. what? Different wheel. No, it's different rims. So, but like this, uh, see the total trailer, they always have rims and tires available. So, again, if you get into that situation, you can call us and then we'll find the closest location where you are and help you out with that matter if we cannot find the 365 miles. Okay? My understanding was that the 315 miles. No. I don't know. No, it's different wheel. The wheel is different. It will, but most tire guys will not put it on there. Yeah. It's a much wider. Yeah. 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 It's an inch, inch and a half different. I had a question. Uh, if I go through the calculation, let's say my tire, my front tires require 105, but on the side of the tire it says what, 125? Or something? <coughs> Correct. It's what if I run on, do I get better wear at 125? No. Um, the reason we have different we have different air pressure tables because of the different loads that you're carrying. So if, if you actually have, um, uh, let's just, a tire is about seven inches wide and eight inches tall. I'll do your assistance. All right, thank you. I know what you're doing. Yeah, so when you look at how much load is on this, if, if, it's, if you have, let's say, 100 PSI and you're supposed to have uh, other way around. You're supposed to have 100 psi, but you really have 120. Then what's happening? Thank you. See, he's stronger than me. What's happening is just this part of the tire is on the ground. So where we want it to have seven inches wide and about eight inches long is a contact patch, about 56 inches. Instead, you get about three inches here, eight inches this way. So it's 24 inches of contact patch on the ground. So what happens? To you? You're losing traction. You would gain fuel efficiency, but these shoulders are going to skip through the contact patch and you're going to have a horrible wearing tire and it'll wear out quicker. So we want the right pressure for that reason. Last question, Okay. Is that Rabel and they don't know you. They don't know you. Does the Prabel and Michelin have any opinion about the tire on safety bands? The, the tire on safety bands, it, that is an internal ring that they, it goes over the, well, over the well, internal to the tire, thank you. So that when you're driving, if you would have a sudden, it, uh, it, what it's supposed to do is stop the wheel, the tire from coming off the wheel. That's what it's supposed to do. Um, we don't have an official position on that. I'm not going to say it works or it doesn't work. Um, How about other Why did they do that? If you were to sell them, why did they do that? 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 Good point. Oh, it, it, if it comes off the wheel, normally if it comes off the wheel, um, we that that normally happens in some type of a, a compromised aluminum wheel, where the wheel flange wasn't true, exposed to high heat. That's the type of thing where you would see that. But in a normal aluminum wheel, the durability that's out there in today's environment, you shouldn't see that happening. 
I have a coach with 315 tires. Would the 365s be a better replacement? Would the 365s be a better replacement on the sear axle? All the way around? All the way around? Well, are there clearance issues already? I don't, I'd, clearance issues, Is Tommy would have to answer. Code? I don't nice think so. H3, non slide. What year? 98. 98. I think you're okay. They may have to reset the steering stops. Um, but that's probably it. And you can only do uh, front tags for the 365. Okay. What about the dualies? No, you would just leave 315s there. There is a clearance issue there. Yeah. Okay. But Thank you. I, I have 315s on my steers. Based on what I've heard, I would be buying new wheels also. Yes. yes. Okay. 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 Yeah, the wheels and the wheels and the cars. Anybody have any idea on the way? He's wondering how much his 2001 elegant lady weighs. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, I, I did bring about 30 books. Like I said, I know this is old fashioned <coughs> paper. Um, on the back side, this is an ozone cracking chart. If, you're, if your tires are sitting and getting dry rot, you would compare the, visually what your sidewall looks like versus this picture to see if it's acceptable range. But uh, anyway, I'll be here for a little bit if there's any other questions, thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, when we're done, we'll uh, resume back in here at 12.30-ish. Uh, we'll have the converters and leak test sessions this afternoon. So we've got lunch to be served shortly. Yeah, the session stand. Okay. <laughs>